It is January 1st. Today I am doing my December sew and tell me maids, whatever you want to call it. I personally just call it my me maids because that's like the Instagram hashtag, but this is what I made in December. Starting out December, I actually, I did something different than what I typically do. Typically I use sewing patterns, but for this make, I actually drafted my own bodice pattern and this took forever. <laughs> I got the idea from a Instagram and YouTube user. Her name is Artisanally, or her name's actually Alienor, but her channel name is Artisanally. And she introduced in one of her videos a pattern from the In the Folds vlog, which is a tutorial about how to make your own bodice pattern. And from that pattern, I was able to do some alterations and make this lovely dress. Now, <laughs> this was not without struggles, and I, it took me like, three three, four tries until I got something wearable, but I made it and you can watch that journey actually in that video. So if you want to go and watch it because I worked really hard on it. But anyway, that was really fun to make. I made that bodice and then I altered it so that I can have like an asymmetrical button placket. And I actually put it a little bit farther to the side than I wanted to. And I cut out the pieces a bit wrong so that it was on the opposite side of what I wanted it to be on. But I'm really happy with how it turned out because it like looked really retro in a way how it was. So I was glad about that actually. My mom actually made a connection. She thought it looked like something that Jackie Kennedy would wear. So that was kind of cool to see that she made that connection there. But that dress was really fun to make. The skirt pattern was from a Vogue pattern. The skirt pattern was Vogue V8789. The sleeve pattern was Simplicity 4426. And the collar pattern was Butterick 3312. I made up actually had to write that down because I couldn't remember the numbers, but those are the ones I use for the other parts of the dress. I don't really qualify that as cheating because I did make the bodice myself. I was just using other things that I I thought would look nice to actually complete the rest of the dress. <laughs> the next thing that I made this last month was this pattern by this designer called DIY Saran and she is a person that I follow on Instagram and YouTube and she does like sewing tutorials on her channel as well but she's also recently got it into pattern making and she has like two patterns out right now. She has this free Christmas pattern and she has one that you can get on her Etsy shop for like just two dollars. So it's really good price and I made her crop top which is from the Etsy shop and I really like how it turned out. I've never made a crop top or anything like that before. I actually may have sized it up once because I wasn't sure how it would fit. I should have done that. I should have just stuck true to size because her pattern fits really well and I regret not cutting out my own size. <laughs> I'm actually going to make another one where I cut out my own size and it should fit a lot better. But I made this pretty blue top and it looks really great. It's like she did in her video where she matched it with a cardigan that she made. I think that would be really cute or even like make a bottom for it too. I actually tried to make this skirt Simplicity 3793 but I wasn't able to finish it because it does not look good at all and I regret cutting out my fabric to making that. I should have just not bothered. I This is my first skirt that I made with an elastic waistband. It did not turn out well. Oh well, I tried but it just wasn't meant to be with this fabric. With this crop top from Saran, I want to make this again and actually cut it out true to size because it's a really lovely top and I think I can make it even better the next time that I make this. So I'm planning on doing something more this spring with it. Maybe get like a brown or a tan and just kind of like doing it again. So that's in the future plans for me. Moving on to the next one. I actually made another Trina turtleneck from that big pile of jersey that I got in November. November. I picked out a jersey and I wanted to make a dress with it but I didn't have enough fabric so I made another Trina turtleneck instead. I made this top again and it was a bit tighter around the sleeves and the torso. I did try to lengthen the sleeves a little bit. I could have done that even more and the same with the waist. I could have lengthened that a little bit farther. But I really like how it looks. It looks great. I'm glad I made it and I was happy that I was able to make another turtleneck and this was great to wear during this winter season. And then after after that I got a Christmas surprise and I saw that DIY Saran actually put out her second pattern which was that Christmas top that I was talking about earlier. To get this pattern you actually go to her YouTube channel, you subscribe to it and then you can send her a picture of that or I don't know if she 
still does the same thing, but that's how I got mine is I DM'd her a picture of me subscribing and she'll give you the pattern for free. So I made this pattern. I have a whole bunch of gray jersey and I wanted to make this just like a nice little lounge top to wear around the house and I adore how it turned out. I used lace bias binding around the neck and then I did a rolled hem for the bottom length of it. And isn't it so flowy and cute? It's so nice. The cuffs themselves, you don't have to do any stretching around when you sew it, so that's really nice when you're actually putting it together. I pretty much made this entirely on the serger and then the rolled hem that I did do, I did that by hem. I didn't want to use my sewing machine. My sewing machines have been acting up this past month, so I don't know about that. I think I fixed my Kenmore, but I had a little problem with my white sewing machine yesterday, but I mean, that one's a lot easier to shackle. It's a lot more of a simpler machine. It's from like the 1950s or 40s, so there's not much more mechanical complexity to it than my Kenmore, which is from like the 70s. But I got this top done and then right when I actually made it, my mom saw that and she was like, you're gonna make me one too, right? So I'm going to make my mother uh, one of these tops in January. So that leads me to the last thing that I actually completed this month, which is my Norma top from Sew Magazine. Now this Norma top was actually for a challenge on Instagram by these two lovely Instagram users and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this hashtag because it's so long in French. Both of these lovely ladies made this challenge for the end of the year to make a lovely New Year's outfit out of the Norma top. So of course, I wanted to get in on this challenge because this Norma top is really cute. And I actually used this opportunity to make my first successful project out of crepe. I have had trouble with crepe in the past before. I've used it before, but I've made two failed projects out of it. I'm still terrified of crepe and I've already made a project out of it. It's very slippery and it's hard to work with. I'm actually, my next video, fingers crossed, is going to be a video where I tackle a second crepe project. I actually have my two fabrics here. This was the fabric I made the Norma top out of and this is the fabric that I'm going to make my other crepe top out of. But I'm going to make a video out of using these two crepes and I'm actually going to see if I can learn how to use crepes more efficiently and give my thoughts about working with that. So I'm doing another analysis and I'm working with crepe this time. I really hope that will turn out well and this is my chance to actually make a successful two projects with crepe and not feel inadequate in my sewing. I'm trying this again. So you'll hear all about that next week. Going back to the Norma top. I made this on my sewing machine in like two days. It was very lovely. I tried to follow the instructions as close as possible. And my favorite part about doing this project was actually putting the sleeves together because it had this way of like putting this little bias binding, but it's not bias binding. It's just like these strips of fabric and actually encasing the edges of the sleeve. That was really fun to me. And it was really satisfying, like actually getting it finished, so. I don't know, that's just like, you have these random thoughts when you're sewing and that was just like my satisfaction of completing the garment for the day. It has these lovely buttons on it that I got from one of my grandma's collections. This is actually the other grandmother, not the one that gave me the patterns, but my other grandmother gave me all of her buttons and this is from that collection. They're hexagons and they have flowers on them. I don't know, I really like hexagons because that reminds me of like chemistry, so might be obsessed with that shape. Same with triangles, I like triangles too. Going into the miscellaneous stuff that I've done this month, I've been working on this yellow scarf recently, Um, probably actually Actually going to post some shorts that I've actually posted already on Instagram this month but I'll post them on YouTube too and I am I think maybe a third of the way done with the scarf it's my Hufflepuff scarf and it is just like the most basic knit because I don't know anything about knitting another project that I've been doing is these shams which I've done the ruffle on one of them and I am about to do the ruffle on the other one. I was working on these yesterday, but I stopped because my sewing machine was acting up. It was fun putting them together and I can't wait to get finished with them. I'm still working on my quilt some. I'm on the very last step of it, which is doing the quilting for it. I'm just like stitching in the ditch, I think is what you call it. Just around all the seams of it. Halfway done with that. Again, my sewing machine was acting up, so I just 
set it aside and I'm going to work on it when I get around to it because I want this to be a fun project for me and that's what sewing should be is fun. That's why I'm doing it in the first place so I'm making sure that this project stays fun by setting it aside and then coming back to it when I'm in like a good mental state for working on that. I think that's it. That's everything that I've done this month and I don't know if I want to say anything else so I'm just going to end this here and next week you're going to see me try to do this crate project. Fingers crossed that nothing happens again. Oh gosh my hard drive really <laughs> really sucked when that failed last month but fingers crossed for good things for this next week and you'll hopefully see more about my crate projects in the next one we'll see you guys later this month subscribe and bye